So many people agree with me whenever I say that American Pie is one of the greatest songs ever written of all time. When did you realize that, wow, people really like this song? Well, I, I don't think I ever realized that. I think that what I was doing, I was very excited about the idea of the song, and I was in a pretty big struggle to get the song recorded uh, the way I heard it. And then after that, I, I just, that was all I wanted to do. I really didn't know anything about hit records because I'd never had one. And uh, it became a, a hit right away. And but, but then it started to morph into being a, more of a phenomenon because <clears throat> the, the hit version was just a three-minute version of the song, all just the chorus and a, maybe one verse or something. And then people bought the album like crazy, so it, it sold a million. And they would call the radio station playing the top 40 and say, hey, that's not the song. We want to hear the real thing. So they'd they'd bring the, the record album, the long-playing album, into the studio when they were doing the top 40 and play the song off that. And, and then the eight minute version became a hit. So it seemed to always have legs. It was always going somewhere. And now it's funny because I, I tell people this sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit depressing, but you have this cancel culture going on now. And um, I, I like to say that, well, we've, We've canceled the environment, and we've canceled the animal kingdom, and we've canceled music, and we've canceled civility, we've canceled the English language, and so many things, which means killed, really. Mm -hmm. And so the song says, the day the music died, so isn't that the day we're living in right now, in a sense? Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I know the song talks a lot about the politics and some events that went on back in the day. And it's crazy how the words of that song are still just as relevant here in 2021, 50 years later. Well, we, we live in a somewhat of a nihilistic environment with people really, but we don't know where this stuff comes from. I mean, who decides to put to pull what statue down? Where does this come from? I, I don't get it. Um, it's all really kind of strange. In the old days, you know, the, the war in Vietnam was going on. You knew to blame the government. But uh, uh, now it's kind of um, a strange environment that we live in. Um, but the song is an apocalyptic song in some ways. So it, it fits the times again. It's funny. These songs tend to come back from time to time when they're appropriate. And right now, American Pie uh, is in the wind more than it's been in, in quite a long time. Yeah, it's a crazy world we live in nowadays, and it's basically information overload with the news that we're getting on a daily basis. And of course, a lot of it's going to be bad, but there's also a lot of good in there if you look hard enough and whenever you find those good things in life you hold on to them i think one of the things that people have to hold on to is their music i mean at least they can go back to that it's like an island of comfort and uh there's a lot of it out there and um things will work out and get better you know we have to you learn when you're my age, you know, that you muddle through and uh, you have to soldier on and good times are in the future. Exactly. I've always told people it's all about what you focus on in life. You know, if you want to focus on the negative, that's what you're going to see. But if you find the good in the world, which there's still plenty of, then you can live yes, a good life. There definitely is plenty of good in the world and so many good people, um, so many giving, caring people uh in the world and we, we, we should never forget that amen to that brother american pie is basically a history book inside of a song i know that you talk a lot about politics and the crazy events of the 1960s but it's also like a history of rock and roll 101 course that you take us through with the lyrics as well and I always appreciated how you helped 
shed light on one of the most important events in rock and roll history, the day the music died, the very unfortunate incident with Buddy Holly and Richie Valen and the Big Bopper. That is such an important event in not only rock and roll, but also country music as well. Because one fun fact that I like to tell my buddies who haven't heard of that story is how Waylon Jennings gave up his seat to the Big Bopper right before the plane took off. So just imagine what rock and roll and even, you know, country music nowadays would be like if that event just went a little bit differently. It's pretty crazy to think about. Well, we also know that a lot of people, Ricky Nelson, Patsy Cline, you know, you name it, have ended up being killed in these plane crashes because a lot of them are taking these flights in order to, you know, under duress, you know, they're they're doing a lot of shows and they got to run from one place to the next. And one thing about the music business, especially when you're young, is they'll they'll work you like a rented mule, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes a long time for an artist to pull back and say, no, I'm going to do this in a cool way, you know, with the right kind of approach. And so Buddy was just 22 years old. He was. Uh, he didn't have any money, and uh, he he had a, a new wife and a baby on the way, and, and he was sort of forced into taking this very arduous tour in, 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 in extremely cold weather, and there were actually members of the, uh, of the entourage there that had frostbite from this. So he opted to take a plane because he had dirty laundry to do and he took other guys laundry as well and he was figuring he would they were working every single night so he figured he'd maybe get five or six hours to get the laundry done before he had to be on stage again and isn't that funny because that's why yeah. he did that rather than be on the on the on the bus so it's it's a you know we really can't you know it's hard to tell people about things when when you don't know what it was like, but I mean, in 19, in the fifties, when I was a little guy, uh, if I mowed somebody's lawn with a cast iron lawnmower, I got 50 cents. Nobody cares about 50 cents anymore. You know, I never, I don't remember seeing a $5 bill, uh, with a kid, my age, 10 years old. You didn't see that. You, you know, you, you, you saved your coins and you maybe had a few little dollars from something and you went and, bought a record album that was three dollars that was a lot of money you know we didn't have money it was only <clears throat> later on i think um when teenagers you know all the kids that came from world war ii started working and, and getting some money they became um a purchasing group of some sort and they came up with that name teenager what well, was a unique name they didn't didn't use it before because we were listening to records like Little Richard and the Everly Brothers that our parents couldn't stand and were wearing clothes, uh, relaxing, getting a bit more, less formal. Um, there really wasn't a blue jean thing at all. It was khakis mostly, that kind of thing. Uh, blue jeans have become so amazingly popular now through the years, but those were... You know, a kid had one pair of blue jeans and you use those to play baseball in or something, you know. Yeah, it was a very fascinating time period, a lot more different than the world that we're living in nowadays. And you captured it so well with the words of this song. It's so well written. I love all the metaphors and interpretations that you do with American Pie. It's probably one of the most analyzed songs in rock and roll history. And to my knowledge, there's never been another song like it that I know of. The, the English language, which I love. In fact, I could never learn another language because I only wanted English words in my head. Um, but the English language is capable of just painting uh, imagery and, 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 a, and a picture that is very detailed and very powerful. And if you hook that up with a good melody, you really don't need a lot of production mm -hmm. because the imagery is, is in the words and, and that triggers your imagination. 
And imagination is what it's all about. I mean, that's really what music is about, imagination. 